the power of double negative. So don't, don't focus on what you don't want. I figured I'd play with that a little bit. And really what it's about is helping you to just kind of take the opportunity to notice how your mind plays with that when you start to think about not thinking about what you don't want. Because we all focus on things and you can focus on what you do want or you can focus on what you don't want. So a lot of people think that they're negating what they don't want by not focusing on it. But I, I always love the example, uh, whatever you do right now, don't picture a purple elephant. And whatever you do, don't picture that purple elephant standing on one leg and don't imagine it spinning counterclockwise. So the thing is, as I kind of prompt you through that, you can't not see it. So your mind goes to the image first before it can negate the image. So when we're thinking about what we don't want, where's our focus? It's on, it's on that thing. Even though we say we don't want it, we don't want to be negative, right? But that's really helping us focus on the negative. We don't want to be broke. We don't want to be stressed. We don't want to be um, a victim. We don't want to be without choice. We don't want to be in a, locked into a situation. We don't want to be controlled by other people or events around us. Uh, so, so the thing is, when you're saying you don't want that, the other than conscious part of your mind, which is what we address mainly in this hypnotic mindful meditation, is really you're engaging it to, to get more of that thing that you said you didn't want because it doesn't hear the word don't. So imagine you said, I want stress instead of I don't want stress. So you, if you eliminate the word don't that, or make it do, then that's really how the other than conscious part of your mind is hearing it. And a lot of times people tell me, oh, I'm, you know, I'm getting results that are not what I wanted. And it's because of the way that they're focusing. Well, I, I don't want to be distrustful. I don't want to be stressed. I don't want to have problems in my life. But really what they're doing is they're attracting more of that. So this is, tonight is about kind of retraining your mind to not, not necessarily be positive. I mean, that, that's a good byproduct of it, but it's to really focus on the positive aspect of what it is that you do want and to state it in a positive language so you're actually gonna get it rather than get the opposite of what you thought you didn't want, which is, again, I'm playing with the double negatives on purpose to help you to recognize the languaging. So, you know, this, this is really, it's, it's more than just semantics because a lot of people think, oh, well, it's just, you know, just to play on words and, you know, um, a professor many years ago, I forget his first name, but the last name is Bird Whistle. And he did a study on communication and the levels at which communication comes across to people and how we perceive communication. And his, his study, which has become a very famous study, said, believe it or not, in communication, words are only 7% of the emotional part of the communication. Whereas, um, you know, the, the tonality is 38% of that. And physiology, the way that we move or our facial expressions or our body language is actually 55% of the emotional part of the communication. So the words are only 7%, but they're a key part because in a lot of ways they direct our thinking towards the other parts. And when you learn how to use your languaging to direct your thoughts in a way that's most resourceful for you. So, you know, we've discussed many times in the other classes, but I think it's always useful to say it again. You already have all the resources that you need. You have everything you need. You're, you're not necessarily gaining anything new from this in terms of knowledge or information, but really what we're doing here is helping you to apply it in a way that you can pull up these resources and apply them in your life 
in a way that you're using it more resourcefully. So a resource is only a resource if you use it resourcefully. So language and that 7% is a good resource, but also our tonality, the way that we say it to ourselves. You know, I, you know, I, 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 feel, I feel really, really calm and, and, and relaxed right now. You know, it's like, does that sound like a congruent message? No, because my tonality was not calm and relaxed. You know, in the same way that if I said, I'm really, really excited right now. And I'm, I'm so happy. I, I could just, you know, like, it's exuding every cell in my body right now. So you can see how physiology creates an incongruent message. So really for yourself, more so, I mean, for the people around you, for sure, they're going to pick up on it. But the first person that picks up on it is you. So this meditation is not about teaching you all these languaging techniques so that you can use them on other people, although go ahead if you want to. Um, and it's, it's not about how you influence others. It's really, most importantly, is for you to recognize how you influence yourself through your awareness of the use of language, of the use of your tonality. You know, our inner voice has a tonality to it. I mean, for years, I kind of kid around that, you know, we all have this chatter in our mind. And, you know, if you're asking what chatter in my mind, it's that voice that just said, what chatter in my mind. So I think one of the things that we're going to do tonight in the meditation is kind of play around with that chatter. First of all, we can change where it is. So a lot of times it's kind of behind one ear and we can kind of move it out in front of you and take a look at it and say, whose voice is that? Right? It's probably not your own. Okay. And it's probably not from the present or the future. It's probably from the past. So when we can recognize whose voice that is and where it comes from our past, and is the voice resourceful or not? If it's cheering you on, keep it. But if that voice is negating what you really set out to accomplish, and it's pulling you out of the most resourceful state, then what you want to do is you want to shift that voice. We can shift the, the tonality of the voice. You, you know, it might be harder to change the words that it's saying, because those might be locked in um, from a younger time. I had a client today, very, very, very successful person. Um, he's actually trained a lot of the people that have trained me. I mean, he's, he's a coach of coaches, very famous and very big name. And I was honored that he even called me and I worked with him to help him to recognize where these voices are coming from. And it was, it was his two year old self that had an issue and created a story around you know, horrific traumatic events that happened when he was younger. I mean, he, here's this guy who built a great and successful business, um, you know, multi seven figure business. And yet he's got these issues that he's getting ready to launch something and he needs to train people in this. And he doesn't feel authentic because he's doubting himself because of this story that his two year old self created. So this is that kind of chatter that's going on in his mind that is costing him potentially millions of dollars or more. And he's in the know enough to recognize that he needs to do something about it. So actually, um, we had connected a while back over LinkedIn. So kudos to LinkedIn if this pans out to be an ongoing thing. Um, you know, he's, he's already feeling better. So we'll see where it goes from here. And the cool thing is that, you know, you never know, like when we talk to ourselves, you know, we can empower ourselves. We can make wonderful things happen. We can attract great things into our lives. I mean, a lot of us here know about the law of attraction and how to manifest and how to bring wonderful things into our life. And, you know, to be, the creator of your world. And a lot of that starts with your own inner voice 
And if it's not your voice to recognize that voice and to kind of shape it. So, you know, a lot of people have played around with the idea of, okay, so if you take that and you move it away, you know, distance can be a huge factor. You know, you know, I had someone I was working with one time and they said, oh, you know, that this negative voice is kind of like right in my face. Like I can't even see anything else. So I literally had them grab it and move it to the side and then let it go. And they're like, oh, that's so much better. So, you know, when we play with this and you have fun with this, I mean, it's, it's all a form of hypnosis anyhow. It's a hallucination. It's not real. It doesn't really exist. That voice is not, we're not really actually hearing a voice. If you put a microphone in the room, there would be no sound. The voice is in our head and it's playing a loop of something that happened a while ago. And it may be your voice, but it may be someone else's voice. And again, is it resourceful or not? That's the thing to look at. Is this voice helpful? Is this getting you what you want? Is it putting you in the ideal state that you want? I mean, the basis of the law of attraction and manifesting what you want in your life is to put yourself into an ideal state. So one of the things I'll share with the replay on this is the emotional frequency scale. So we can look at, you know, where are we at on that scale? You know, and, and it's not necessarily a scale of one to 10, although it can be, but really that emotional frequency scale can, you know, can be a way of just gauging where we're at in terms of our mental, emotional uh, state of mind. And when you can adjust your state of mind to the right level, like at the line is kind of a neutral state. Um, above the line is positive, where you're in a good mood, you're focused, you're motivated, you're optimistic, you're happy, you're enthusiastic, right? And below the line is kind of negative, feeling down, feeling sad, feeling angry, you know, these are all the negative emotions. So I'm, I'm not going to get into that. This is not a class on uh, law of attraction. Um, but I will send out that sheet um, as part of the replay so that people can gauge their mental, emotional frequency. And when you keep yourself in, in, in a higher frequency of vibration, then you attract more of that to you. And you also manifest it within yourself and it's what you start to see in the world around you you know one one of the concepts that i've studied through neurolinguistic programming which is a, a deeper form of hypnosis actually but it's got some other tools as well and with neurolinguistic programming they, they talk about that perception is projection so what we're actually doing is the way that we perceive the situation is really what we're projecting out into the world. So if we're feeling stressed, you know, a lot of times it's, we're projecting that stress into the world. And, you know, if you've ever been with someone who's really stressed out, you start to feel stressed. They're, they're kind of putting that vibration into the room. So a lot of times what we're seeing, we're really seeing something that we already have within ourselves. And when you can recognize that, when you can recognize that every part um you know i mean even with dreams right every part of a dream is all you um every part of how we perceive the world around us is an insight into who you are and gives you a clue of something that you can if you recognize something and you say oh this person needs to change that in themselves well it's probably you that needs to change that within yourself forget about them and you know, a lot of times when you make that change within yourself, then you'll say, oh, it's amazing. Since I've made that change within myself, it's amazing how much better that other person has gotten also, because we're not projecting that onto them. We're, we're seeing the best in ourselves and we're seeing the best in them simultaneously. So, you know, I have a client that has um, some major trust issues, right? And it's justified. Things happened and she trusted the person and they broke trust 
and it didn't end good. So she has a hard time trusting people, but really the people in her life now are trustworthy. So the real issue is, is it that she shouldn't trust these people or where is the real issue? If we take perception as projection, the real thing to do is for her to focus on trusting herself because in trusting herself, then she will have a better perspective on trusting the people around her. It doesn't mean to trust everyone, but it gives you a cleaner filter on how to trust the people around you, right? It gives us a cleaner filter on perceiving the information as it is, rather than projecting our own uh, negative emotional states into the situation so that we're not seeing it as resourcefully as we could. So if, you know, life is choice, right? My favorite saying. And if life is choice, you know, what are we choosing to focus on in any given moment? And how are we focusing on that is based upon the stories that we're telling ourselves. So again, here comes that self-talk that's creating a story, either spontaneous or, you know, or, or we're creating a story that we can live into. You know, I, I have a blog that I did many years ago. It's, it's still actually up and every once in a while I look at it and I go, that's cool. I should keep adding to that. But I, I, I've been so busy, I haven't had a chance to really uh, get into that. But it's called Living Your Stories. And really the preface is that, you know, we all have a story, but where, where is the story in terms of past, present or future? Is it a story that's based upon our history? And we're just, you know, that's our story and we have to live based on that as, as um, you know, historical information. It's, it's the truth, it's, it's what is. It, we can't dispute that it's what happened, right? It obviously happened, so we can't change it. And if it's not a good story and you can't change it, then that's gonna affect every moment of the rest of your life and not necessarily in the most positive way. So if it's a present story that's spontaneously unfolding before us, well, then it's, you know, it's here and now and it's the story we tell ourselves and we can change it in an instant, but it's not much of a foundation to build upon. And if it's a story about our future, now it's a story that we can write in such a way that we can live into it. So in my opinion, really the best thing is to have a story that has both an aspect of the present moment and it's, it's writing the future because in the present moment is the only way that we can really affect our future. The future doesn't exist yet. And we can do things now that create the future that we want to live into, right? So we're creating a future that's gonna be worth belonging to right? And when you create a future that's worth belonging to, and then you live into it, you're living into the life that you want. So a lot of that, again, coming back to is based upon the self-talk, which is what's spontaneously creating that story. So if it's a voice from the past, either ours or someone else's, and we're listening to that voice, and that's the story that we're paying attention to, then you're just repeating the past. And it's going to be very hard to change your mindset and to move forward in a way that's different. You know, if you always do what you've always done, you'll always have what you got. So something has to change. And in my opinion, the easiest thing to change and what we're going to work on tonight in actually changing is that inner voice. That voice that's maybe, maybe in the past it was focused on on something that you didn't want, right? And you say, well, I, I, I don't want stress. I don't want problems. I don't wanna be poor. I don't wanna, I don't wanna be overweight. I don't wanna have bad health, you know? So, but again, in the negation, we're speaking something different to our other than conscious mind. So really what this is about tonight is, is relanguaging that and saying, I, I wanna be wealthy. I wanna be healthy. I want to be wise. I want to be positive. I want to be successful. You know, what is it that you actually want? Instead of 
don't focus on what you don't want, right? The title of the class tonight, but focus on what you do want, which might seem like it's the same thing. And linguistically in a double negative, it, it kind of has that twist to it. But we wanna stay real clean with this. We wanna align that self-talk and make it so that the self-talk reinforces over and over again. It stays with you, you know, be it your voice or if you wanna add in someone else's voice, I, I welcome you to add in my voice. It's only gonna encourage you in the most positive ways tonight to kind of build that self-talk and to create those wonderful affirmations that are gonna help you to, to reaffirm, right, who you are, to reaffirm what's important to you, to reaffirm what you're capable of, to reaffirm what's even possible for you, to reaffirm the most empowering beliefs, to reaffirm your actions, that you take the best right next action, no matter where you are, or who you're with, or what's going on around you, you, you you're overcome that environment so that you become the person that you truly are deep within and well into the future in a way that you're creating the future that you want to live into by spontaneously creating the story that works best for you to live into the situation that you want to create. So if you're wondering when the hypnosis starts, or if you're wondering if it had started already, the languaging that I'm using, okay, and I, I kind of, with, with all my clients, I asked them permission up front, is that a lot of ways that I've learned how to do hypnosis are conversational. So already in just telling this story, it's intentional on how you can start to shift your mindset and shape your way of thinking and already begin making these changes. So really the, this pre-talk part of the hypnosis or the pre-talk part of the meditation or the mindfulness, you know, is that you are present, you are here, you are now, you are listening to myself. And I'm also taking it on a level where I'm speaking not just to your conscious mind, but I'm simultaneously speaking to your other than conscious mind in a way that in some ways, it might not feel as relaxing to you, but at the same time, it's going to get you the results because no one was thinking that up until this point that I was actually hypnotizing you and retraining your mind to start to think in a way that you reshape that other than conscious chatter in your mind, or sometimes we, we even become conscious of that chatter. And, you know, I, I've had days where I said, I can't believe I just said that to myself. And I instantly go, you know, a great tool here. If you say something to yourself, you say, oh, you know, um, you know, I'm so stupid. Why did I do that? Right? So the great way to, to counter that is to just say, cancel, cancel. And then follow it up with what you do want. No, I'm smart. I'm an intelligent person. I just said or did something stupid. Let it go, right? So this, this is a useful tool. Just kind of have this in your toolbox, okay? And we'll, we'll do our best to install this in the meditation part. But really, if you say something to yourself or if a voice comes up in your head, you can cancel it. It's your mind. And you can train it to work for you in a way that you're training it to work for you to get the results that you want. Because it's really, you know, when I work with people with their decisions, you know, they say, well, they know it's a good decision because of the results that they got. And 90% of the time, that's what they say before they worked with me. And, that, and that's how most people spend their life. They, they're like, well, I know it worked because of the results that I got. But really, wouldn't it be better to have a strategy that works for you, that you know you're going to get good results? Because the strategy works. You've tried and you've proven the strategy to yourself. So on the same note, you know, we've all tried and proven a strategy that doesn't work, that negative self-talk, 
that that chatter in our mind that tells us we can't do things or that um that we're, you know like i said before i'm stupid I, I can't do this it's it's not worth it it's a waste of my time i'll never make it happen it's just not going to work nothing ever goes the way i you know let's do is this sounding familiar to anybody other than me? <laughs> um, and I've done so much to work on this, and yet it, I still, it's still there because we're bombarded, especially nowadays, with with everything that's going on in the news and the world around us, and it just it just came, seems to get crazier and crazier. I mean, I heard this story on the news. I don't even want to even like entertain that it could be true, but apparently somewhere in India, there was a lab. And they were doing experiments on these monkeys with the coronavirus. And the monkeys escaped their cages, beat the scientists to death, and ran off with samples of the coronavirus. I mean, tell me this isn't how every really bad science fiction um, pandemic, epidemic movie ever started, right? You know, I, I was thinking my mind went to, and the DJ was talking about this, you know, Planet of the Apes. And... And it's just, you know, I mean, like, no, nah, it's, it's, it's almost surreal. I, I can't, you know, and, and it might be true. I don't know. <laughs> it was just, it was so funny. I just negated it. And I like, okay, I, you know, there's so many things we could worry about. There's so many things going on in the world. And yet we can be the shining example. You're here, right here, right now, listening to this, mindful of yourself and what you allow into your mind and how you allow it to process for you. And more importantly, doing everything that you can within the language of how you talk to yourself, within the physiology, within your tonality to yourself, that you shape your mindset to not just seem positive, but to really just have the most resourceful, optimistic, beneficial outcome that you can in any scenario that you're faced with. And then you become the example, right? You wanna see the world calm down, be the example. You wanna see the world be more optimistic, be the example. You wanna see people treat each other nice, be the example, okay? In anything, I have a friend of mine, the name of her business is Be The Example. And I just love that and I love living into that. and. To me, you know, one of my words for the year is authenticity. And I always look at what I'm doing is, am I being authentic with living into the message and living the message that I want to put out to the world? You know, one of my superpowers is resiliency. So here I am teaching mindful, hypnotic, mindful meditation, right? But one of, one of the benefits of you learning this and practicing this, and it, it is a practice. It's something that, that you know, you get better and better and better the more times you do it. It's a skill, right? So as you do this, you're, you become more resourceful. You become more resilient. You're able to handle situations because you've built into you a wonderful feeling and a resource state of being calm, of being relaxed of being mindful, of staying present, and telling yourself the best possible story that works for the present moment now to create a future worth belonging to. So that's, that's the basis of what we're doing tonight. Um, Anyone have any questions, concerns, comments, things you want to add into this or take out of this? Or um, I'm going to set up the music. Meanwhile, uh, feel free to just unmute yourself and ask any questions or express any concerns of what you'd like to address in addition to this. I can barely hear you, Ed. Did you have a comment? I said I'm good. Okay, cool. Can okay, anyone else have any um, comments or concerns or?
just setting up the music. Okay. And let's see what we're going to share tonight. You know, give me two seconds and I'm going to pull up. Hmm. Yeah, you know what? We'll just, uh, I'm going to share the whiteboard just to have a, a blank background. Not sure why this doesn't have um, another way to share the screen. Okay, so everybody knows the routine by now. I see everybody turned their video off. Cool. Um, hopefully, you're you get yourself in a nice, comfortable, quiet place where you won't be disturbed, and you can get nice and relaxed. If you have headphones, you can listen through your headphones in a way that just makes this a most enjoyable, hypnotic mindful meditation experience for you. And I'm gonna play around with pulling up resources that you already have within you. And in that, it's really about being present at a level that you become even more aware of what you're not aware of that cause you to let go and to just relax even more deeply into a wonderful feeling within yourself and throughout your life. Because there have been things in our life, times in our life where we got ourselves into a state that we wish we could just undo. And equally true, there have been times in your life where you've gotten yourself into a wonderful state. And at other times, you wish you could just redo it. So it's really about putting the spotlight on the feeling that you want to achieve within yourself because you already have these resources. You can't even take a moment and think about now a wonderful state of mind without pulling up that resource of that wonderful state of mind. And then you've got an option to let it go or you can apply that wonderful state of mind and dive in and experience it full on now. Now, I'm certainly not gonna tell you to pull up a whole list of wonderful experiences that you can go through right now, one at a time, experiencing them, or maybe even compiling them. There's clients I've worked with where they pull up wonderful states like relaxation or focus, and then they pull up motivation and enthusiasm. And then they realize something really cool. It's not necessarily about choosing which one you want to feel. You can feel each one of them. You can combine them. You can combine all of them and explore the wonderful combinations because it's not necessarily a science. It's more of an art. And sometimes it's not about being hypnotized as much as it's about dehypnotizing yourself, 
lot of people have negative patterns in their life, unresourceful patterns, ways of doing and thinking about things that just don't work for them. And they let it go. And they explore. And so can you. Just let it go. And just explore the list of wonderful feelings. Because if you can take a moment now and just think of a wonderful feeling and then notice if there's any particular part or place in your body where you feel that first, you can feel it now. And you might even choose at the same time, even if it already is a feeling of relaxation, that you can just relax into it. Couldn't you do this now just by thinking about it, just by playing with it, just by imagining it? I mean, take a moment, think about it, picture it, imagine in your mind if you could experience this wonderful feeling in your body. What would it be like? What would it look like? What would it sound like? That's right. Feel it now. Expanding. In a way that this resourceful state becomes even more of a resource for you to learn and to grow. A wonderful feeling that goes with this experience so that you can apply it in many areas of your life. You've already experienced exactly how you do this is up to you. It is. Isn't it up to you? What you do with your mind is totally up to you. After all, it's your mind. I'm just training you and guiding you on how to even more effectively utilize your mind and to use your mind. A personal trainer doesn't teach you how to use your muscles. They train you on how to use your muscles for certain results. They don't teach you how to lift your arm. Sure, they might teach you a different form or a different posture. They might help you so that you use the right amount of weight a moment at a time and add to that only in the ways that are helpful for you to build not just your physical muscle, but your mental and emotional stamina to deal with those situations, to have that level of resiliency that will guide you, self-guide you through any situation, through any circumstances. So no matter what you're hearing in the world around you, you're able to control your state. You're able to make the best decisions that you can. You're aware of your own self-talk and how it empowers you or how it limits you. And you adjust it in a way that works best for you. Not just to explore this, not just to apply this now, but to live it and experience it in a way that you can take the most resourceful voice and put it in front of you, talking in the most wonderful way that you begin to really experience the effects, the mental, the physical, the emotional effects of this starting now and expanding well into your future 
in a way that you might not have thought possible until you start doing it, won't you? Begin now to shape your inner voice in a way that it affirms to you many wonderful things. learn through repetition and you can teach yourself in a way that in a moment I'm actually going to ask you in your own mind not out loud but in your own mind repeat after me the wonderful suggestions that I'm going to give you because in a moment I'm going to say some wonderful things about yourself And I want you to believe it and make it true and live into it. Live the wonderful story that you create for yourself to be exactly the way that you want. Now, repeat after me in your own mind. You don't need to say it out loud, but the more... The more energetically you say it, the more enthusiastically you say it, the more emotionally you repeat these suggestions in your own mind, the more effective they will be. And I'm going to say it to you in two ways. I'm going to say it to you sometimes as if I'm the one saying it to you. And you can allow my voice to go with you in a way that it just helps you feel empowered in those moments where you just need a boost from the outside. But more importantly, I'm gonna say it to you in a way that you can repeat it word for word in your own inner voice. And this can begin to build a new and wonderful positive chatter. In a lot of ways, we call this a hypnotic rant. You know, we've had situations in our lives where hypnotic rants have pulled us out of the most resourceful feelings that we could have. But this is designed in such a way that it's going to empower you to feel even more of the wonderful feelings that you want in all areas of your life to begin to expand just who you are, just how you live, and just be more resourceful and just expand on those resources and just live into it and experience it in a way that helps you to enjoy your life even more now that you realize You can do anything you believe you can do. Repeat this in your own mind. I can do anything I believe I can do. You've got it, and every day you get more of it. I've got it, and every day I get more of it. You have talents, and you have skills, and you have abilities. I have talents, I have skills, I have abilities. Repeating this over and over in your own mind, You set goals and you reach them. I know what I want out of life. That's right, you go after it and you get it. People like me and I feel good about myself. You have a sense of pride in who you are and you believe in yourself. I'm healthy. I feel good in my body. I'm wealthy. I earn the money that I deserve. I earn more than the money that I need. I earn enough money to support a lifestyle that empowers me to enjoy my life even more because there's nothing holding me back. Nothing seems to stop you. You have a lot of determination. You turn problems into advantages. You find possibilities in things that other people never give a chance. I turn problems into advantages. I have a lot of energy. That's right, you're very alive. I am very alive. You enjoy your life. And I can tell it 
and so can others. You keep yourself up, looking ahead and liking it. You're optimistic about your future. You see the best case scenario. You look for the opportunity in everything that you come across. There's always an opportunity. You're always saying to yourself, it's all good because you believe it, because you realize it, because you fully, fully appreciate within yourself that it is true and you make it true, that it is all good because you say so. And because you say so makes it true. And because it's true, you live it. And because you live it, you realize you can accomplish anything you choose and you refuse to let anything negative hold you back or stand in your way. You say to yourself, I'm not afraid of anything. I'm not afraid of anyone. I have strength, I have power, I have conviction, I have confidence. I trust myself. That's right. Trust in yourself, trust in your abilities, trust in the wonderful resiliency that you have to meet challenges head on. You like challenges and you do meet them head on, face to face, today especially. That's right, as you go deep within, this wonderful feeling inside of you. And you start to recognize that whatever's going on in the world around you, you're not under the circumstances, you're on top of the world and you're going for it in spite of anything, any fear that you might've had, you've overcome that, you're on top of it and you're going for it. You have a clear picture in your mind of what you want. The words come to mind, of what you want. The feeling comes into your body of having and being in the process of accomplishing what you want. You can see it in front of you. So see it now, vividly. Notice how colorful it is. Is it moving? Is it panoramic? Is it close? Is it far? Where is this image? Are you seeing it through your own eyes, fully associated into your body, seeing it through your own eyes now, experiencing this wonderful feeling of being on top of the world, going for it, highly resilient, highly confident, highly focused, highly motivated, and yet calm and relaxed and clear. And enjoying the moment now. See it in front of you. Feel it in your body. Hear the wonderful things you're saying to yourself. And maybe even hear some of the wonderful things others are saying to you. You realize what you want. And you realize how to get it and you realize that it's all up to you and you realize you can do it. I can do it. You can do it. I can do it. You can do it. I can do it. You can do it. Roadblocks don't bother you. Come on. They just mean that you're alive and running. You're not gonna stand still for anything or anyone. That's right. You know why? because you trust yourself. You trust fully and completely that you've got what it takes. That's right. Not just a little bit of what it takes. You've got all of what it takes. You've got plenty of it. And more importantly, you realize how to use it and apply it today more than ever. Today, you're unstoppable. That's right. Today, I'm unstoppable. I've got myself together. That's right. Repeat that in your own mind. You've got yourself to, I don't have to get myself together. I've got myself together, that's right. And you're getting more together each and every moment of each and every day and today, look out world, here I come. That's right, look out world, here you come. You're a force for good in the world. You're doing wonderful things. You're setting the best possible example. People look at you, they admire you. They say, wow, how do you do that? I want what you have. 
I want those skills. I want those superpowers to be calm, to be relaxed, to be focused, to be at peace, no matter what's going on in the world, to have that level of resiliency that you have within you now is the experience of creating this for yourself, awareness of all the feelings you have in your body and in your mind is trained to recognize only the best qualities that you have awareness and control of these qualities now that you can recognize them, implement them, adjust them, fine tune them and live them full on right now is when you can do this right here is where you can do this. This way is how you can do this simply by saying limitations. I don't even recognize them as limitations. That's right, because there is no challenge you can't conquer. There is no wall you can't climb over. There is no problem that you cannot defeat or turn it around and make it work for you. As a matter of fact, any problem in your life, think of any problem that you could have possibly had in your life at any time in the past or the present or the future. And it's not about defeating it, but it's about literally turning it around, turn that problem 180 degrees, find the opportunity, make it work for you, make it work in your life, make it be the most wonderful thing that's ever happened to you so that you find yourself saying, I stand tall, I am honest, I am sincere. I like to deal with people and they like me. I think well, I think clearly, you're organized. You're in control of yourself and everything about you now, aren't you? Going to feel good as you recognize these awesome skills and abilities that you're enhancing, that you're developing, that you're expanding into your future, that you're living into it. You realize what you want and you say what you want. You're able to state it clearly and effortlessly moving into it, creating a future worth belonging to. It's about being the best version of you. inspired to overcome, to become the best of what you have to give. It's not about demanding perfection of yourself, but it's about striving and expecting and achieving the best of what you have to give. And as you imagine it, now, expanding into your future, the very best of what you have to give yourself and the world around you, the very best of what you can say to yourself in any given moment, the very best of the choices that you can make, the very best next right action that you can take, and the results are the very best. This is what you want, and it's what you get and you never give yourself excuses. You get things done on time and in the right way. Today, you have the inner strength to do more than ever. That's right. Today, I have the inner strength to do more than ever. Today, I have the inner strength to do more than ever. And I'm just a hypnotist. And that's just a suggestion for you to recognize. You are an exceptional human being and your goals and your incredible belief in yourself turn your goals into reality. Say, I have the power to live my dreams. You have the power to live your dreams. I have the power to live my dreams and you can live into your dreams believe in them like you believe in yourself and this belief is so strong that there's nothing that diminishes your undefeatable spirit 
inner strength, powerful, positive inner wisdom being your guide to explore possibilities of who you are, becoming even more aligned with your vision and your purpose for being alive to align with your core values, the things that are most important to you here and now. Believe in yourself. Believe in your abilities to adjust your own inner voice. And adjusting your own inner voice empowers you to believe in yourself because it's possible, because you're capable of doing it. And simply because you can, you will, and you do. Don't you recognize the logic in creating these wonderful feelings in yourself, the wonderful skills and abilities, and the positive benefits of believing the best of the best of the best in yourself, to be the best of the best of the best version of who you can be right here, right now, to live the best of the best, of the best possible life, to create it, to enjoy it, now, and to act upon it, to simply act as if it's true, to pretend, pretend as if this, as if this is true for you, just pretend as if you're the best version of yourself right now, or at least pretend that you're a better version of yourself right now. And then I'm gonna invite you to pretend that you're no longer pretending. And then pretend that you're no longer pretending that you were pretending. And then just allow it to be true, because it is. So, in a moment, I'm going to count from one up to five. And when I reach five, you can open your eyes and be fully alert, fully aware, and fully aligned with the wonderful self talk that you've adjusted within yourself simply by recognizing where that negative self-talk came from and to install new and positive, more resourceful, helpful self-talk. And it's not so much about changing the words that were being said, but maybe it's about changing the tonality. Maybe it's more about changing the location Maybe it's about changing the way you hold yourself accountable for your own self-talk. Or sometimes maybe it is shifting the words so that you don't focus on what you don't want and you do focus on what you do want in a simple way to change that languaging simply because the whole time I've been talking about this, you've had some conscious awareness of how to apply this into your life. Yeah, you've got the words. You can undo what you didn't want. You can redo what you do want and then save it in your current memory. And share it with the world around you. It's a tool. And now you have this tool to be used on a conscious level and then other than conscious level, perhaps at the same time within your awareness and throughout your life in full rapport with your conscious will and your other than conscious imagination so that they begin working together 
in full rapport, working together as a team, as one. Two, help you to recognize any benefits that you had received from less than resourceful ways of talking to yourself or less than resourceful voices that were kind of creating that chatter in your mind and to find out perhaps what was the positive intention behind that chatter? What was it trying to protect you from? What was it trying to do for you? Maybe it had a good intention. Maybe it didn't go about doing it the best way. Maybe you created a wrong story about what it was actually saying. So maybe just a shift in the tonality, you can change it from a negative statement to a question of concern and protection. And think about three new, wonderful, resourceful, positive, empowering thoughts that you can add into that repertoire of self-talk so that you grow and expand and become a bigger and better, more wonderful version of who you truly are. And when you begin to experience this wonderful version of who you are, it's not just for yourself, but it's for all the people in your life to experience you and these new and more resourceful ways, because you might have thought of one way or two ways or three ways, but either way, it's not just for yourself to share with the world around you in a way that it's for others to experience a better version of you simply because of how you made that shift and how you talk to yourself in a way that you make a shift towards a better way of being in the world and being the example, a shining example to the world around you. That's right. So when you're ready to experience your life with this new and improved self-talk, this new and improved feeling about yourself, then and only then can you now experience it with not just one or two or three or even four of your senses awakening to that reality now, but when you're ready to feel it in every cell in your body, that's right. When you're ready to get a taste of how deliciously wonderful your life truly is, getting better and better and better and that's right. When you wanna wake up and smell all the flowers, not just the roses. And when you can hear that wonderful shift in your inner voice, and you can get the results of hearing what other people sing to you and about you as well, then and only then can you now open your eyes with all five of your senses, fully awake, fully alert, and fully aware of just how great it feels to have made this wonderful shift in your inner voice and how you talk to yourself and how you feel about yourself and how you live your life. Because every day, in every way, you're living your life in a way that it gets better and better. Every day in every way, you're getting better and better. Every day in every way, you're getting healthier. Every day in every way, you're getting more prosperous. Every day in every way, you're enjoying your life even more and more, creating a future worth belonging to. So take all the time you need in the next minute of clock time to bring your awareness back into the room right here, right now. <laughs> um, and again, as always, we, um, you know, unmute yourself if you want to share any uh, questions, comments, concerns, um, things you enjoyed, your takeaway from this. Um, Mark, 
Yeah. Uh, I want to say it just like amazes me every week, every week. It's almost like you read our minds beforehand. Like, I know this is what they're going to want to hear from me this week. And it's like you, you touch upon it. Like, it's so like, it's unbelievable how you're, you're so good at matching what might be going on in the world that week that people want to work on. It, so I really enjoyed this tonight. I, cool, I appreciate it. that. And, and that's really, that's how this came about. You know, I, I started this particular meditation uh, because of, you know, the, the pandemic, whatever you want to call it, COVID, uh, Corona, um, and people were, you know, they were, the thought virus was spreading. And that's really where I said, okay, I, I can't stop the physical virus. There's lots of wonderful people in the healthcare industry that are doing their best to, to help people that have gotten sick with this um, and to keep them well and to, you know, guess or whatever they're doing and educating the world. But what I can do, um, and thank you, Julie, is I can help people train their mind so that they think about it differently. So you can't change what's happening in the world, but you can absolutely 1000% control how you react to it or not, or no reaction to it whatsoever. So this has always been about being proactive in a way that you decide what your state is, you decide what you want in your life, and then you decide how to live into that and create it. So anyone else, comment, question, concerns? I was thinking there was no music then. Was it my imagination? Um, there was music. Yeah, I didn't hear it. It was weird. I was like, I thought it was, I was like seeing things. I'm usually, I'm so used to the music. I'm like, where's the music? It, it seemed like it's I heard the music. Music. Yeah, I heard, I heard it in the beginning, and then I lost you. So then, when I came back on, for some reason, the music wasn't on. I wonder if it was just me. Uh -oh. I can't really tell how loud the music is in relation to my voice. The only thing I've done is, over the the past several weeks, I've gotten feedback from people that it was too loud, and I can actually see where the volume is at. So right now, on on my player, it's like at volume twelve has been the one that's been working. That, and, and when I go back and I listen to the recording of this, it, it sounds like a good mix to me. Um, so. Hey, Mark. Yeah. It's Esther. Um, hey, Esther. Thanks so much for today's session. I know that I've been MIA, but it's good to be back. <laughs> okay, glad to see you. We missed you, Esther. Missed you, Julie. I mean, I mean I've, I've seen you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, with all the, all the cool stuff we've been working on, but... Um, yeah. yeah, in regards to the to the music, to give feedback, I think yeah. the music died off towards the end before you finished, um, I guess, you know, bringing us back. I think that's what he was referring to, but when yeah, you listen okay. to the recording, yeah, it, there was, the music was on from the beginning, but then towards the yeah, end, yeah. I think it ended abruptly or before, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I think right, that was so, my experience. So what I try and do... Uh, manually, is I, I fade out the music at the end. Oh, oh okay. Good. That oh, wasn't my imagination. But I, I was already done. <laughs> we were, so, clearly. You might not <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. I wasn't out yet. <laughs> so, so for those of you who, um, who got a little bit of a peek last weekend behind the curtain <laughs> at, at how the wizard does some things, um, you realize that when the hypnosis is over for the hypnotist, it's not necessarily over for the subject, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, secrets. so you got you got kind of a felt experience of that insider uh, trick of the trade, so to say. <coughs> mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean that's I love it. Great example. It's great proof of it. So, you know, the hypnosis was over, you know, as far as I was concerned, but yet people didn't come out of it. And when they did, there was no music anymore. And it had already ended about a minute ago. <laughs> mm -hmm. So very cool. Yeah. I, I, I'll take that as a compliment. <laughs> that means we were very observant. Yeah. So very cool. Um, anyone else want to share anything before we wrap this up? No. Stay safe. Okay. All your so, lives matter. 
Yes. Thanks, Ed. All lives matter, right? Exactly. Yes. All lives matter. That's Esther, Esther actually lives in the city. She's oh, uh, God. a lot closer to all of this than we are. Yeah, well, yeah. it's coming. It's Midtown this weekend, so I can't wait. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Oh, my God, are you kidding me? Upper Midtown, West Side. Yeah. The airport is here for these people are paid to 